Okay. Here we are. My name is Robert Sirdey. I'm an approved contractor, uh, brand ambassador, and teacher here at Imperator. So um, I must say, I'm, and I must uh, start with this, um, I feel a little bit nervous and I feel a little bit uh, excited at the same time to talk in front of you today. Uh, as we'll be talking uh, in this webinar about the different types of Venetian plasters, applications, history, choosing the right type substrates and so on. Um, we will run through all the topics. We've seen the email already. And uh, also, I'll take questions. So I would love to hear your questions. What we will do, if you can uh, find the little box uh, on your screen where you can type a question on, most probably uh, the mid of the webinar, so probably in about half an hour, and at the end, I will be taking questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer all the questions and all the questions you might have. Depending on how many there will be, and if we cannot cover them all, I promise you that I will go to every single question and send an email out to everyone that is attending the webinar. So here we are. Okay. Um, people ask me, brand ambassador, what does it mean being a brand ambassador here in Impera Italia? Okay. So that means I represent Impera Italia. I'm also an applicator and uh, I specialize in the application uh, of uh, Venetian plasters and micro cements. Uh, the company that I run is called Atelier de Venice, okay? So this is what I do. Um, most of the projects, we go through the Impera Italia, we represent Impera Italia, and uh, we apply the best of our knowledge. Um, I am a teacher as well as Impera Italia, so what that means? That means that I run the three days Venetian Plaster course, okay? That's the introduction, Venetian Plaster course. I found it very important because it's the core is the foundation of the Venetian plaster training, okay? It's a very extensive, um, with a lot of information, a lot to cover to the three days. I love teaching it. So uh, maybe some of you have already been on my course. Uh, maybe some of you, you will be on my course. And I can tell you that I love teaching the course and uh, I love also sharing all my experience that I have in the Venetian plaster, okay? I have been doing this continuously for the last seven years. But my experience go way beyond that. I've worked for quite a few years in Italy, in Germany, traveled the world a little bit. I've been a plasterer for altogether for more than 20 years, probably altogether. So I have a different understanding of different types of plasters and applications. And so um, here we are with the first subject of the webinar, and that's the introduction to Venetian plasters. We'll talk a little bit about the history, beauty of the Venetian plasters, okay? Uh, when it comes to history, I'm not gonna repeat what you can find, and probably have, probably most of you have found on Google already, and that is how old it is, you know? There are quite a few versions online, so uh, the most common one will be that uh, the Venetian plaster started somewhere in the fourth century in Italy. But uh, there are also proofs that uh, a very similar type to the Venetian plaster has been found on around 9,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. Okay, so we don't know exactly where it originated, but what we do know is where the version of what we use today comes from, and that's definitely from Venice, okay, from Italy. Therefore, the name of Venetian plaster, okay. When it comes to the Venetian plasters, um, they originated in Italy, as I said. Um, they originated as a material that uh, was and still is abundant in Italy, which is lime and crushed marble, okay, with different binders. Um, it's a product that definitely works well with the timing. It's a, a product that definitely gives beauty as well. So, you know, if, most, of, most, uh, most probably all of you already know about the different types of the Venetian plateau and but uh, what I'm here to cover today, mostly in this introduction, is um, where the Venetian plasters can be used and, you know, how can we do them, uh, where can we apply them, what's the substrates that uh, are ideal for the Venetian plasters, and what are the different types of Venetian plasters and how can they be used, okay? So um, when it comes to applying the Venetian plasters on the substrate, most of the times the today's world is applied as a beauty product, okay? As a fashion, as a um, something that's out of the 
ordinary, something that is beautiful, something that is meant to transform a place into something uh, at a much higher frequency, if you want to call it so, and much more beautiful. So that's the main reason for which we use Venetian plasters today. Okay. Um, when it comes to the beauty of the Venetian plaster, I want to cover a very small uh, topic. It might look very uh, unimportant, but it's something that I came across on quite a few occasions. And um, if you don't already know, I'll show you. Most of the people, when talk, uh, when are talking about the Venetian plasters, are talking about the very shiny, glossy Venetian plaster. Okay, so even uh, even people that didn't hear much about the Venetian plaster, they definitely know about the shiny Venetian plasters. Okay, I hope it can be seen on the camera. Okay, so we do have the glossy, shiny Venetian plaster. And this is really the Venetian plaster, in a way, because this is something that is very well known and spread over the world. Okay. Uh, one of the questions, as I said, it might sound a bit silly, but I find it valuable to mention this. A lot of people ask me um, during you know my, all these years, and a lot of people assume that if the Venetian plaster is shiny, it can also be washed. So because of the shiny and glossy surface, a lot of people would assume they can be washed and um, is easy to, you know, to maintain. Well, Venetian plaster as a product, as an application, is definitely a very durable finish, a very durable. When I say very du durable, if done right on the right substrate and, you know, treated right, it can be there for hundreds of years, literally hundreds of years. You know, you'd imagine how else would someone found a Venetian plaster from the fourth century, you know, so hundreds of years if it's done right. But it's not meant to be used as a piece of marble or as a tile. Because it has a glossy appearance, it doesn't mean it can be treated as another surface with a glossy appearance. So most of the times we are doing Venetian plasters for its beauty, okay? So it's not to be treated and it's not as hard wearing as marble or tiles, okay? This is one of the things that a lot of people will uh, will make a confusion about, okay? Definitely have um, very good qualities when it comes to applying different environments, such as, you know, maybe wet environments, a lot of moisture, you know, so it definitely have a lot of properties that makes it ideal, but it's not as hard wearing as uh, the surfaces, okay? So when it comes to the beauty of the Venetian plaster, um, there is also a little bit of a confusion about Venetian plaster and marble, okay? A lot of people, uh, I've seen it over the years, that a lot of people see the Venetian plaster and uh, associate it with marble, okay? Um, yes, indeed, Venetian plasters can be used to achieve a marble finish, okay? You see it here at my back. And this is definitely something that, uh, you know, at least from my perspective, from our perspective, looks like marble. And that's called marbling. But Venetian plaster is actually a beautiful, gorgeous finish on its own. And Venetian plaster has the advantage of not having to replicate anything else. Because Venetian plaster, uh, as I said before, uh, one of the oldest uh, known appearances of Venetian plaster is more than 9,000 years ago. So is a finish and is a material and is a plaster on its own. Most of the times, if a simple Venetian plaster is perfectly executed, is actually is absolutely stunning on its own. So it doesn't have to replicate anything else. Yes, as I said, you can use different types of Venetian plaster to achieve a marble finish, but it's not always the case. Okay, so um, I've heard a lot of people that don't know much about Venetian plaster and asking me, can you do this or can you do the other? Like, can you make it look like marble or can you make it look... Yes, it can be done, but um, I always try and encourage people, um, try not to forget that Venetian plaster, well executed, is the absolutely stunning finish on its own. And it's timeless, which is why we are here today, which is, I believe, why you are here today, okay? To learn about it because here we are in uh, 2023 we are still talking about the nation plaster and not only we are still talking but it's actually um, coming back stronger than ever um, i remember 
seven years ago when we looked into it, in the UK, generally speaking, it was growing up. Um, I know, if I remember the numbers right, that from 2018 to 2019, the market went up four times in the UK. So there is a huge growth and demand for this type of product. So there's a lot of people that uh, see it more and want it more. Uh, of course, we have the advantage of social media today and different platforms, so um, everything spreads much easier as an information, as images. But there is a huge interest in the nation plasters nowadays. As I said, it's a timeless finish. And uh, if you actually look at some of the prestigious buildings in the world, you know, historical buildings, we can see very uh, well-executed nation plaster that has stood the test of time and is there, it's been there for more than 200 or 300 years. So if a Venetian plaster is rightfully done and uh, perfectly executed, it definitely stands the test of time. So as I said, it's a prestigious finish on its own, okay? Um, when it comes to the beauty, uh, I do recommend most of the times that if a shiny Venetian plaster um, is to be done in an area where there's a lot of traffic and uh, where it can be subject to a lot of damage, uh, probably cautions should be taken um, for this hard, you know, wearing of it not to happen. So it should be untouched, really, you know. So it shouldn't be used in a place where everyone goes and scrub it and scratch it and touch it all day long. Um, you know, I've had this happening a while ago where I was making, I always like to make comparison. You know, when I talk, so um, somebody asked me, can I wash it? And I've asked my questions, if you were to buy Mona Lisa, you know, God help you all to buy Mona Lisa or whatever, any famous fa painting, because you pay a um, good amount, a big amount of money on it, does it mean, is it bulletproof? Does it mean you can wash it? No, of course not. So it's pretty much the same thing with the Venetian plaster. It's a stunning finish. It has this glossy appearance, it has a lot of qualities, but it doesn't mean, you know, it, it's bulletproof, okay? So that's when it comes to the beauty of the Venetian plaster, okay? So in terms of the introduction and um, the types of different Venetian plaster that stood the test of time, um, all the plaster that has been uh, around, the Venetian plaster that has been around for hundreds of years, they were all lime-based line based and crushed marble okay so that's really the the core of the venetian plaster line and crushed marble okay um this is part of the the, the first chapter and um, as we go into the second chapter which is different types of venetian plasters i would strongly encourage you and remind you and i would actually love it because you'll definitely help me and i'll, I'll be more than happy to do so please ask me any questions, okay? So any questions that pop up uh, in your mind at any time, just write it in the box that you see, and I'll be more than happy in a short while to, to cover them all. So uh, I've said before that uh, historically speaking, the Venetian plaster has been uh, composed of lime and crushed marble, okay? So this leads us to the next chapter, uh, which is different types. Of Venetian plaster, okay. Um, when we look again at the traditional way of doing Venetian plasters, and you know, the traditional types of Venetian plasters, lime and crushed marble, um, we will see a, quite a range of different types of plasters. And the main difference in between these all Venetian plaster types will be the size of the aggregate inside the size of the crushed marble bead that's inside the Venetian plaster. And um, we would start from a very fine powder of marble. So we have both the lime, the binders, and the uh, powdered uh, marble. And that will give us, I'll show it again, a very shiny Venetian plaster. And we call this Grosello di Calce. We have Grosello di Calce. We also have Venetian, which is even finer. It's a very, um, a very smooth material, very fine material. Okay, so uh, this will definitely be the materials that we would be using 
to achieve a very glossy finish. And what I, uh, what I have referred to before is the the core, the classic Venetian plaster. Okay, so Graselo di Calce or Venetian, uh, of course, traveling around the world, you'll be uh, you'll come across different names. On the courses that we run, uh, on the courses that I run, on the Venetian plaster courses, I always encourage the people not to get attached necessarily to a certain name, but to try to understand the type of the material you are working with, and that will definitely give you, uh, you know, uh, definitely a much better specter of the finishes. So try to concentrate, I always encourage people to try to concentrate rather on the type of the material. So when you look into a tub and you find this uh, very fine Venetian plaster, most of the times there's only one thing that you can do with it and is this glossy finish okay so we start from a very fine powder when it comes to marble in the materials that we have okay as we go up in the range we have uh, what we call marmorino supreme again same things line and um, crushed marble only this time the size of the marble inside is 0 0.3 millimeters okay so we already have an aggregate we're heavy we already have uh, grit inside of nation plasters this is marmorino supreme uh, i don't have a board here to show you but if you come in the showroom you'll definitely see in a few places which i'm not going to show now because we don't want to move the camera and everything you know we'll make it complicated but um, this marmorino supreme is something that uh, is, is a finish that will give this uh, glossy look but you will still have a little bit of uh, texture. So you'll be like a, like a combination in between the glossiness and the texture of Venetian plaster. Okay. Um, it's a very easy to work with material once you understand the application, which you go, of course, through the three days Venetian plaster course. As we go up already, we have the Marmorino Fino. And Marmorino Fino, Again, we have lime, and um, the size of the aggregate inside is already 0 0.4 millimeters. So you see how it's a very small difference in between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, yet the results that can be achieved with these materials is, is quite big. You know, there's quite a difference in between them, okay? So we already have the size of the aggregate inside the plaster that let us achieve both um, smooth finishes and also textured finishes, you know, so we can already start uh, talking about the pitted effects, the different textured effects, the um, rocha rustica. Okay. So we have a finish where we have used uh, two coats of Marmorino Fino in black, and uh, whatever you see, uh, the shadings up top are created with different color washes or metallic paint. But as a core finish, only two coats of Marmorino Fino, okay? So the 0 0.4 millimeters grain inside will also help us achieve something like this. I'll show you a different finish as well. Okay. Yeah. This. It's not here, I can't find it. Yeah. Again, we, we've actually used the same material as here. Where was it? Here. So they're both done with two coats of uh, black Marmorino Fino, just different uh, applications, okay? Here we have a pitted yet smooth and shiny, you know, semi shiny surface in black marmorino. And on top, on this occasion, we have applied a, a few metallic waxes. Okay. So, one of the characteristics of the wax would be that it only stays and applies on a surface that is pretty rough. If the top of the surface is shinier, the waxes, the metallic waxes that you see around, they did not stick as much. And therefore, will help us achieve this effect, okay? So Marmorino Fino, it's a coincidence that both of the finishes that I've shown you are in black, but it can be any color. And actually, probably I should have said it from the beginning, 
all the line plasters that I'm talking about on this uh, webinar, you can find them in this beautiful catalog that we have. There is quite a range in here. We can see some of the finishes at the back. And um, if the color you are looking from, you are looking for is not in the catalog, uh, we offer a color match option. Okay, so um, in order to be able to do a color match option, we will need something physical from your side. Either uh, can it be a small color chart or a piece of something or, you know, something physical that we can compare it, compare against and create this color match. Okay, so range, uh, the, the, the range of the colors is really limitless. Okay. As we go up from the Marmolino uh, Fino, which was 0 0.4, we'll have the Marmolino Classico, 0 0.7 millimeters, okay? Marmolino Classico, we already have a bigger gray, which works perfectly for the more textured finishes, okay? So the bigger the gray, the, the greater the depth of the pitted or textured finishes, okay? And as you go up, Okay. Just check with my colleague if everything is okay. Can you all hear me? Just wanted to check. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you so much. So um, as we go up in the grain, we have the travertino, which is 0 0.9 millimeters. And I have a finish here. So when it comes to the travertino, this actually two exact finishes you will learn how to do in the Venetian in the three days Venetian plaster course. Um, we would use travertino to create something uh, textured, natural looking, but not shiny. Okay, so it's definitely not the product if you want to achieve a shiny surface. Um, we love it. It's actually one of the uh, materials that I personally prefer the most because. Uh, it can be done on a great amount of square meters. It can uh, be done on great, you know, a big amount of walls and ceilings and um, look very soothing and calming, you know. But there is more of the very shiny Venetian plasters, even though they're lovely. Most of the times cannot be done in a, such a great amount of square meters because otherwise you'll look like very, you know, that's just my personal uh, point of view. So Travertino, 0 0.9 millimeters, grain size. Okay, um, heavily textured finishes and matte finishes, okay? So these are some of the different types of Venetian plaster that we offer, okay? The, the variety of the materials is actually much greater, okay? We do have a much bigger variety of different types of materials. All the materials that have been talking about it until now, they are all lime based okay um, now i'll come to a point uh, where i'll be talking about the different types of venetian plaster in terms of the composition the chemical composition so i've said everything until now it was lime based well uh, technology had advanced and thanks to the technology um, we also have the acrylic based products nowadays okay so when it comes to the acrylic products it means is a new ish technology you know that have been used in the last uh, few tens of years so it's uh, definitely not something that has been used for hundreds of years like the lime plaster so um having said that acrylic is something that you used a lot in the um, paint industry and a lot of different uh, materials um, what he has in mind is uh, a good workability um, spreading rate colors you know being worked in a lab and developed, of course, it has properties that are much uh, easier to work with. Um, I've heard this conversation a lot in the past where a lot of people argue that lime-based plasters are better and acrylic plasters are better. Reality being said, I work with both of them and uh, I choose either to use a lime or a lime-based plaster, or a lime-based plaster or an acrylic-based plaster, depending on what I want to achieve and where I want to achieve, okay? So um, I've had someone asking me, what's the best product range 
for bathrooms, wet rooms, okay? So, um, generally speaking, in wet rooms and bathrooms, I would strictly and only use lime-based plasters. Uh, but this opens like a whole new world, so I don't want to talk uh, about bathrooms a lot on this course, but when I say that a lime-based plaster, venation plaster, can be done in a bathroom, I'm referring to everything in the bathroom apart from the shower area. Because from our perspective, from my perspective, no venation plaster should be applied in the shower area. It can be done, but um, there is a, such a thin line in between doing a job that is very long lasting and doing a job that um, is very little lasting that we decided, uh, to, we took this decision not to apply any type of venation plaster inside the shower area. So wherever the water runs through the surface, we would not recommend to apply any venation plaster. For all the rest, inside the bathroom, including the steam area, walls or ceiling, we would recommend to apply a lime-based venation plaster and not an acrylic venation plaster, okay? So you see how already um, the difference in between lime and acrylic has settled a little bit. Acrylic venation plaster, I'm talking mostly about the Luciano. We have uh, this acrylic venation plaster. I'll bring this sample up again. If you look on the top of the sample, you'll see a lime-based venation plaster. This is venation. And on the bottom, you'll see an acrylic based venation plaster and it's called Luciano, okay? Um, if someone with not a lot of experience would look at the, the materials, will not see a huge difference, but they do have different characteristics. And as I said, uh, acrylic, I would not be using it in a bathroom, not at all. So whatever there is uh, moisture or steam or water, I would not be using acrylic. I would use acrylic though, um, wherever a very shiny, glossy wall is required, wherever different color combinations of the plasters are required, okay? Wherever something uh, literally mirror finish is required, because Luciano, meaning an acrylic product, is something that can be worked to a level that is absolutely a mirror, okay? It can be, it can be done in such a way that it's absolutely a mirror finish. Venetian plaster, Venation, the line based venation can also be done uh, at that level of glossiness, but requires a much greater amount of effort and skill. Okay, so achieving a very shiny surface with the acrylic venation plaster is actually much easier. Okay, also the colors. When it comes to the colors, the line based venation plaster tend to have a, a pale side of the colors, where there's a acrylic venation plaster we have a much more uh, a much stronger, much more vivid appearance of the colors. Okay? So this will be one of the main differences in between the lime-based and acrylic-based venation plaster. Okay. Now I have a question. Do you need to seal? So do you need to seal Tadalact using bathrooms or any places that come in contact with water? Okay. Um, when it comes to the Tadalact, there is quite a bit of... Uh, you know, from my perspective, misunderstanding on the market, because Tadalact I refer to rather as a finish, you know, rather, uh, I refer to as a finish rather than a material. Tadalact is something that uh, as a finish can be achieved with uh, one of our Marmorino Pino or Marmorino Classico. Uh, and that means a smooth Venetian plaster, not very shiny, um, that will still have this cloudiness in it and will resemble the Tadalact finish. Tadalact as it used to be done, um, for hundreds of years, uh, mostly in the Arabic countries. It was something that, uh, as far as I know, as, as far as my knowledge goes, something very thick applied, you know, sometimes like 15 or 20 uh, millimeters thick and rubbed for an extensive period of time with different stones and soaps. Um, you, I, you know, where I look from in the today's world, we want to achieve um, good results with minimum um, labor and minimum, you know, work. Because if we have to work 
on a wall for days just to rub it with stones and different soaps and waxes to achieve the tidy like finish. Probably is something that wouldn't be as spread. And probably that's the reason why you don't find it as often. But um, what we can use and what I see on the market that a lot of people use for a tidy like are different types of Venetian plasters to achieve the tidy like finish. So when it comes to the question, if we can seal the tidy like to be used in a bathroom or any places that come in contact with water. It goes back to what I've said previously, and that is, from my perspective, no venation plaster should be done in a wet area, okay? So that means direct contact with water. For that, we have the micro cement. So we definitely use a um, um, very good product, the micro cement, um, that can be done yet to resemble a tidal act finish, but the characteristics and qualities of the micro cement are much greater when it comes to getting on contact with water, okay? So when it comes to the different types, I've only made like a small uh, introduction, if I were to call it so. If I were to talk about all the products available in our shop and on the market, you will definitely take a, a webinar or, you know, a session much longer than an hour. Okay, so these are some of the core materials that we do use. Um, we change, or not change, but we add to our variety periodically. Uh, new materials are coming up, new materials are getting developed in sight, okay? So on the website, on the Imperial Italia website, you will find a much bigger range of the products and different uh, applicabilities and uh, different characteristics. Okay. This one being the second chapter, with I was talking about the different types of uh, Venetian plaster, um, will lead me and I want to start talking about the substrates and application of Venetian plasters. Uh, what I look from uh, as an applicator and having the experience in the plastering field and uh, quite an extensive experience, I would say, uh, applied the Venetian plasters and micro cements, I really strongly believe that the substrate of the Venetian plaster is more than half um, in, in, in the importance of um, making the application long lasting. Okay? Because at the end of the day, that's all about. And as I've said at the beginning um, of this video, is that if the Venetian plaster is applied correctly and on a very sound substrate, it can be there for hundreds of years, okay? So the importance of the substrate to me is quintessential, okay? Thank you so much. So when it comes to the application in different substrates, um, Venetian plaster can be applied on a, such a wide range of materials that, you know, it's probably um, pointless to mention them all, but um, rather than the type of the surface, you know, such as plaster board, plaster, tape and joint, uh, you know, solid walls, so quite a, a big range of, uh, of substrates. Rather than this, uh, the type of the surface, I would concentrate on how the surface is built, okay? So what I mean by that, uh, again, we are 2023 and most of the properties uh, that I come across and I go and see the project will have plasterboard. Okay, so um, I will talk about this substrate because it's one of the most common uh, used in building houses today. Not building, but finishing the surface of the walls and ceilings. Okay, so when it comes to the plasterboard, we all know that plasterboard comes in sheets. Okay, so in order to uh, finish a wall, several layers, several um, sheets of plasterboard will be used one next to the other to cover the wall, either by tacking, which means screwing the plasterboard onto the wall, or by dotted dab, okay, which means sticking the plasterboard onto the wall. Um, my main concern is uh, wherever there may be movement and the joints in between two sheets of plasterboard can move and therefore show a crack. So I'm very keen and I like to uh, talk about this as much as I can, even though uh, I probably have a few builders that I work with um, that might be annoyed you know, about me being so keen on the substrate and preparation, but I love to talk about it. I love to talk 
and I love to mention um, as often as I get the, the chance to talk about the substrates. I'll get some more questions from my colleague. Thank you. What do you use? Okay, I can use this plug and the panel past the thickness. Thank you. Okay. So somebody asked me, what do we use for the base coats, aggregates, and can you reduce cracking or does it depend on plaster thickness? Okay, so it's exactly the point, um, uh, it's exactly what I'm talking about now uh, when it comes to the substrate. So the thickness of the plaster, existing plaster, uh, what we find on a wall is most of the times irrelevant if uh, the substrate can crack or not. Because most of the times, the cracks will come from movement, you know, most of the times. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but the most common problem of the cracks is movement, okay? So um, going back to the plasterboard sheet, fast forwarding the, the conversation, wherever there is the possibility, I would always um, recommend, strongly, highly recommend, the use of a double layer of plasterboard overlap or staggered. So what that means, if uh, the first layer of plasterboard has been jointed in here, the second layer of plaster of plasterboard will be jointed staggered, so not in the same position. By doing this, uh, we uh, minimize as much as we can the possibilities of uh, any movements in the plasterboard and showing cracks. Okay. Um, another thing that we can do. And I strongly recommend, and uh, from a, a plaster perspective, is one of the best things that can be done, as a professional perspective, you know, is one of the best things that can be done, that is to apply and to install an anti-crack system, okay? So, um, anti-crack system is something that we do with a base coat, okay, called Colbeton, C-O-L-B-E-T-O-N, Colbeton. You do find it on the website, if you go, and also, uh, if you talk with any of our colleagues, we'll be more than happy to, to talk to you about it. Uh, this is a base coat that comes in bags, in a powder form, and um, it needs to be mixed in a bucket with water and a mixer to create a paste that can be plastered on the wall. The anti crack system uh, is something that is done prior to any venation plaster application. It consists of two layers of this uh, Colbeton base coat uh, with fiber mesh embedded in between the coats. So, uh, the rendering fiber mesh, one meter wide rolls by 50 meters, which you can also find at Impera Italia. Uh, if we embed this in between the first coat, the second coat, you create the so-called anti-crack system. So uh, what this means, if it's done, means that it will absolutely minimize the chance of any crack showing. Um, but you will not totally eliminate. So it doesn't mean that if an anti crack system is installed, there's 100% protection against the cracks. It doesn't mean that because, as I was talking previously, if there is movement in the wall, even if an anti crack system with mesh is installed, there is still a possibility of crack showing. But on the other hand, from a professional perspective, is one of the, if not the best thing it can be done as a preparation for the substrates, okay? So um, I'll give a few examples. One of the most uh, common situations that I see when I go on a site, I go in a room where the walls have been plastered already, freshly plastered, and people say to me, look, this is ready to go. It's actually everything is nice and smooth and flat. It's ready to go. Of course, as an applicator, I do like to work on a substrate, on a wall or on a ceiling that is really nice, flat and smooth, because that means that I start doing my primer, and start the application of the venation plasters, and I have nothing else to worry about. But what I'm the most of the times keen on finding out is what's behind that plaster. Okay, so as I've said it before, most of the times there will be plasterboard. And also, most of the times, there will be one layer of plasterboard and then plastered on top with normal mold finish. In this kind of situation, where there is only one layer of plasterboard with multi-finish plaster on top, I would strongly recommend the installation of an anti-crack system, even though the walls had been plastered already. Because one layer of plasterboard with multi-finish plaster go, uh, uh, having been applied on top of it, 
it doesn't mean it's crack free. And actually, uh, as a matter of fact, I do believe that most of you have seen cracks appearing in the ceilings or in the walls in the houses where there's only one layer of plasterboard and multi-finish on top. So what we can do in that case to uh, absolutely minimize the risk of cracks is to apply this anti-crack system, okay? So this is something that uh, I'm really keen about. Something to be noted here is uh, when I price, I'm not gonna talk about numbers and prices, but when I price um, a Venetian plaster project and I do say it in the quotation that I do include anti-crack system. A lot of people were comparing my final price with the final price of any other installers, you know, competition, if you want to call it so. But something to be mentioned it is uh, that most of the times I do include the anti-crack system as well. So there's a lot of work on its own because on average it takes two extra days of work for the same surface, okay? So this is something that uh, I wanted to talk about. We have another uh, question. And then still do the appropriate sealants. I personally didn't feel confident using wax on a splash bag as there are a lot of splashing oils. Very good point. So I'll, I'll say it again. How would you go about kitchen splash bags? I have used marmorino and then sealed with appropriate sealants. I personally didn't feel confident using wax on a splash pack as there are a lot of splashing oils. Very good point. So uh, when it comes to the splash pack, uh, I'll go back to what I've said initially when I was uh, showing you this. And that is that if the Venetian plasters are shiny or uh, you know they have this uh, beautiful appearance, it does not mean that they are bulletproof, okay? So Venetian plasters, generally speaking, are not the product to be used in a hard wearing area, including a splash bag. So uh, I've had, um, not a lot, but I heard quite a few customers um, specifying a certain type of Venetian plaster onto a splash bag, okay? So the same conversation, I've had it, and I said it can be done, we can do it, but you will not stand the test of time when it comes to oils, when it comes to uh, different products, like, I don't know, you name it, tomato sauce, vinegar, wine, coffee, oils, yeah, they will stay in the Venetian plaster. So my recommendation is if someone wants Venetian plaster on a splash back because they absolutely love the look of the Venetian plaster, I would strongly recommend to install clear glass on top of it, okay? Um, yes, different protectors can be used, but um, when it comes to the kitchen, I've also find that um, Whatever a kitchen means for someone doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for someone else. So I've seen people that use the kitchen once a year, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I've seen people using the kitchen twice or three times a day, which again, is on, on the other, you know. So it really depends a lot on how often a kitchen is being used. But if it's being done in a kitchen, if it's being done in the kitchen uh, where um, a lot of cooking happens, I would strongly recommend, if you were to do it, to apply a clear glass on top, okay? Another question that we have, what is the name of the color wash you use on Venetian plaster? Can they be used on all materials? Is there, are there many colors to choose from? So when it comes to the color wash, you know, that leads us to that lead us to choosing the right Venetian plasters. So I've named just a few, but you know some of the most common used Venetian plasters. Um, they can be used in a different manner, and you know they can also be combined in between them to create all sorts of different finishes. When it comes to the uh, color wash, we do have a lime wash, and we also have uh, an acrylic wash. Um, I forgot the exact names of them, but what I will do, I will put this uh, and uh, all the questions to be answered in an email and I'll come back to you, okay? When uh, I said that different types of Venetian plaster can be used to achieve different finishes, I'll just show you quickly uh, one finish where we have used Travertino, Marmorino Fino, 
and venation in three uh, in two different colors okay so this is an example um, where we can use three different types of venation plaster to achieve a finish that from my perspective is gorgeous you know so i really hope you you enjoy it too okay also apart from the uh, color washes okay that we can use on top of the plasters we could also use metallic paints as i've uh, said in the beginning and we have it here so here we have a few different types of metallic paints added onto venetian plasters um, just something to mention metallic paints are something that can definitely be used on their own and most of the times it's something that uh, you know is used on their own but we could also we could also use them to add certain effects and shades and colors to the venetian plasters um, we can use metallic waxes in different colors okay like i've shown you on um, on this board here which is here so here we have used uh, gold metallic wax copper metallic wax silver metallic wax and many other colors that we have uh, with us in here okay. so choosing the right venetian plaster i really strongly believe that when it comes to venetian plaster there's no right or wrong Okay, so um, choosing the right type of venation plaster will be based on what you want to achieve or you know, your customer or yourself or your family, okay? So based on what you want to achieve, we choose the different type or types of venation plaster because as I've shown you here, uh, there are finishes where you can use three different types of venation plaster to achieve certain effects, okay? So choosing the right type of venation plaster will also be based on where you want to achieve it. So, as I said before, if, uh, if something like in the bathroom, apart from the shower area, okay, walls and ceilings, uh, I wouldn't um, use an acrylic plaster, but I would rather use a live plaster, okay? Do you get a question? Can you explain the wet on wet technique and which plasters is it used with? Uh, this is something, uh, I wouldn't say very technical. It's something that we talk about a lot uh, in our 3D venation plaster course. And uh, yes, we do have certain materials where we can use the wet on wet technique, and that will be to give us more time. You know, uh, we have more time to uh, go over the plaster and the surface. It can do, we can also achieve um, improved shine, improved sheen okay, on the products. So it's something that uh, we will talk about and we will also work on the three base nation plus of course okay it cannot be done with all the materials uh, but there is something for example like marmorino supreme we uh, strongly recommend to apply the wet on wet um, marmorino fin or classico if we want to achieve something like a tadalac finish so uh, yes it's something we can definitely talk about on the course okay my colleague wants to say something to me so seb yeah Okay. I've been told that even though I do love it and I want to stay even more, we have uh, probably a small technical issue. So uh, I'll try to uh, wrap it up and uh, um, before we end the webinar for today, I want to mention that uh, this is the first webinar of a series. Um, I want to thank you uh, very much, uh, first of all, for showing up and second, for having the patience and listening to me. Um, when I say this is the first one, I do promise that we are working on it to make it even better. But also what I wanted to touch base on is that our next webinar, um, dates will show up soon in details, uh, will be something that will cover um, how to set up as a professional, as a professional Venetian Plaster installer. So um, where does your skill set need to be, where to advertise and to whom? networking and finding clients, importance of managing the project, contracts and way to protect yourself and expanding your business. Okay, so this will be something that we'll be covering in the next webinar. So I would strongly encourage you and actually it will help me and us hugely if uh, you take a few minutes to write us an email maybe based on what you'd like to see more. Okay, so um, webinars 
are something where I am more than happy to share my experience and you know understanding of different uh, techniques, innovation plasters, marketing, and everything I know and we know as a team. But uh, we cannot run courses in the webinars. That being said, though, uh, we are also planning uh, to run a few webinars about uh, uh, different certain types of Venetian plasters and talk uh, more in detail and more profoundly about them. Okay, so um, the next webinar we are thinking to do it about what I've said before, you know, the advertising, networking, and managing, and so on. And also, if you have, uh, I strongly appreciate, we are strongly encouraging uh, SQ, uh, if you can do us a favor to write us an email about what you would like to see more in our webinars. Uh, as I said, this is the first of a series uh, based on um, the inquiries and based on the demand. We will do even more, even more often. Um, I also promise that we will get better at this. Um, I want to thank you, everyone. Before we say goodbye, I'll take two more questions. Uh, how would you apply metallic paint over Venetian plaster? I'll make it quick and I'll say that if you use uh, most of the times a flat sponge, we do sell on our website something called a tobacco sponge. Um, and even though it's a sponge and you say, you know, it's a sponge like many others, well, what makes it ideal for the application of metallic paints on top of the Venetian plaster is that it's very flat and it's pretty hard. So if you apply a little bit of a metallic paint onto your sponge, and then with that flat sponge, you go over Venetian plaster, start very slowly, see what you get. If you want more, you can go uh, with more pressure. If you want less, you will try to go less pressure. So that would be one way to do it. Of course, you can use brushes. You can use, you know, whatever comes to your mind, okay? What material is used to make the lines for the crack effect? Good question. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, something that you will learn in a marbling course. Again, when it comes to the lines, for example, these ones, if we're talking about the cracks and, uh, you know, what we see on the marbling, we can use different waxes, metallic paints, water-based paints, crayons, you know, you name it. I always, always encourage people uh, to experiment on themselves. So when you experiment, you don't have to do it on a big wall because that can become quite time-consuming. Maybe why not, you know, financial, you know, money-consuming as well. So you can always get a 1 kg pot of a material and test it out on a small sample, MDF sample, or, you know, that's what I usually do in our courses, and go and test with different, you know, crayons, colors, paints. Uh, and by doing this, you know, I always uh, encourage people to practice, because by practicing, you get to find out even more. So, uh, actually, one of the uh, things that I wanted to say regarding the courses, the Venetian Plaster courses, the turnaround of the people and the convention of the people that take the uh, Venetian plaster course with us and become full-time applicators is actually uh, one of the highest on the market. And we do take pride in that because our, what we want, our aim is to help the people that take the course become applicators. Because at the end of the day, in Tara Italia, we are a supplier of materials. And we can only sell and can only be successful if we sell it to successful people, the materials. So, the main thing about the course is, is for everyone attending it to become really successful. Okay. Can a color wash be used on a micro cement before link? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, um, yes. Again, even though I shouldn't be talking about this because it's a micro cement question, uh, probably someone is being very technical about it. The best thing to do is to test it out for yourself and see how it works for you because it depends a lot on the types of the colors. It depends a lot on dilution of the color wash. It depends on uh, the application of the micro cement. It can depend on many factors. So probably the best thing would be to make a small sample for, you know, MDF sample, apply some micro cement, sand it, and before you apply the link, maybe go with a little bit of a color wash and see what it comes out for yourself. So I strongly encourage before going on any big surface with any new technique, Test it out on a small sample. So this will be my my answer for today. Um, I'll try to wrap it here today because, as I understand, uh, you know, we have uh, this uh, small technical issue, and I'm uh, being told by my colleagues to try to wrap it up because otherwise there is a risk that the connection might just cut off. So.
So uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm really grateful for everyone who turned up and uh, listened to what I had to say. Um, I'm so much looking forward to see you all on the WEX webinar. Um, as I said, we are planning to do a series of uh, different webinars with on um, different themes and subjects. So uh, we're so much looking forward also to uh, hear your feedback on this webinar. And also, uh, I do personally promise that the questions that I didn't answer on this course, or if you are sending out more questions, I will take time personally and um, write the emails with answer. Okay, so thank you very much again. And um, I hope to meet you all soon, if I haven't already, uh, in the shop. Have a good evening. Thank you.